Everybody, Coach RJ from Fit Club. We're with one of our great members, Laura, and we're talking about sobriety and the journey that fitness and the two relate to one another. So in the first video, we talked about you or anybody that is struggling with getting going. And you know, you fall into some bad habits. Maybe you've gained some weight that you're unhappy with and you're thinking about making a change and you make that change by taking your first step by coming and trying out the gym. In the case of sobriety, it was your family telling you it's this or we're out mm -hmm. and making that decision to go to a meeting and being in the room and just feeling uncomfortable, <laughs> not knowing that everybody else in that room has struggles too and have walked the same path of you. And then once you get into that journey, you become strict, you become strong, and then you get a setback. Like everybody has a setback. In the first year, there's always a setback, right? I find after the first year, the setbacks aren't as big. In the case of the sobriety journey that you had, it was you went sober for 47 days, which to you, when you first said it, you're like, yeah, I went sober 47 days and then I, then I fell off. And it's like, not like I went 40, 47 days, no drinks. And I'm like, 47 days at the gym straight and yeah. clean eating, like that is amazing, <laughs> right? And I think that's where like a coach comes in is like, we're your cheerleader. We're like, no, what are you talking about? You did one day. Like when, <laughs> when, when somebody comes in their first day, I'm so excited. And like my biggest fear is they don't come back. Right. And when they come back, like there's this, it's, it's that small me as a coach, from my perspective, it like gives my heart like another beat. Right. And so for me, like people say, well, what is your motivation? Like that person right there, you don't even know their history. Like they started way worse than you. And like whatever you're going through, they've gone through that and 10 X and not only that, but they shred it off all the weight and they're in the best shape of their life, you know? And so when people get into the mix of their journey in the middle part, and they're attending and they're consistent and they're on point. And then, you know, something happens at work or, you know, like an injury or some type of marital issue or whatever it might be. And they get so glued in that, that like, I need to fix this one problem that I'm going to shut down the rest. But then I love it when people bounce back like you, and it's like you, you took the action, you move forward and then you got consistent. And so today we want to talk about now you've been consistent for nine years strong at this so nine years what is it that you've kind of learned and you feel like you've evolved into a new shell and then what is it that you know now you've like got rid of that like problem right so what what's next <laughs> what's next is you know i one thing that i always say is always remain teachable always you're always if you're not growing mm -hmm you're you're not moving forward and so for me that next step was getting healthy i have a three-year-old nephew who is amazing mm. and i want to be able to keep up with him <laughs> and when he was born we were hiking and i was huffing and puffing and i thought gosh this is this is so hard and i just wanted to make it easier so i started on my 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 fitness journey yeah um and eventually came to fit club and Came home kind of yeah really yeah yeah it, walking in the doors here was one of the best things that i've ever done yeah um i walked into the doors and yes you're right it was scary it was so scary walking <laughs> day, in one. day <laughs> yeah. one yeah i think i probably looked like a deer in headlights yeah. the whole time oh yeah <laughs> but i got through the workout yeah and then i kept coming back i wish we would like had an opportunity like if we can just have jerome sit here on everybody's day one and just film their day ones yeah. you know and then we just like play back on a video like this like a year later and we're like do you remember that we used to we used to do that that's yeah. a, that's that'd be a great like reflection you know Absolutely. like we do these videos i don't know if you've seen like the very first video that amanda pottery did so amanda pottery she came into the gym she messaged me she was nervous blah 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 and i was like i'm not having this conversation anymore just show up that's basically what i said so I told her how it was i was like i'm done kid gloving you and she came in and she did her workout and i remember i would not put her on the floor she i was like it just it just she she struggled so much and i didn't want like her to feel embarrassed and i just wanted to get her body moving and we did this for three weeks okay and then the very first day she wouldn't do she was always doing these the modifications i'm like what are you doing like let's just do a jumping jack it's not hard just do this do this and then yeah. she just started doing it right. and she did like 10 jumping jacks that day she made a video in her car and we still have that video to this day and she you watched it and she made that video and she just started crying she's like i was that the girl that 
always said no and like I don't listen to that part so I you know I don't to me I don't remember that whole part all I remember is like this is what I did I did the jumping jacks and not only that now I can do 50 right and so you know it'd be amazing to see that day one so let's continue on with like what is what is your motivation what continues to strive so you're, you're talking about progress you're talking about growth so what does that mean to you so you know how does the the sobriety does that even like play a factor in the things that you do today and that you're looking to do forward or is it gone no it, it's i think it's always going to play a factor in my life uh honestly um it taught me how to believe in myself and love myself and want to do things for myself to improve mm-hmm. because i was in such a place of darkness and it was just a it was a really bad place that i was in and and i needed to grasp onto something um and i i was grasping onto anything that i could and i took those steps from the program and i applied them to my life as best I, as i could and i still do that to this day okay um and and just having the faith in myself do you take the same steps and apply it to your fitness uh you know i do I do in in some cases, uh, in some ways, it definitely does apply to to my fitness. But I think I need to implement that a little bit more. I think okay. that I think that the steps of AA can be implemented in absolutely anybody's life okay. because they're so. I mean, anybody. Can we do? Can we like talk about the steps? Yeah. So yeah. so why don't you tell me what step one is, and I'll relate that to fitness. So what we've done is we pulled up the 12 steps. Laura yeah. said that she needs to implement it more with it when it comes to her nutrition and her fitness. So step number one from what we're pulling on the screen here is we admitted we are powerless over alcohol, that our lives had become unmanageable. Right. And and for me, um, you know, I've used food as a crutch in my past and um, I've made it to the point where it was unmanageable because all I was doing was, was feeding my issues and numbing things with food. So really fueling your body with healthy and nutritious food and working out and and being active can relate to that as well right you're you're taking care of your body in in this in the same manner so you can you can apply it in that um my life had become unmanageable i couldn't you know i just i couldn't do the things that i wanted to do without some sort of struggle yeah so that would be like somebody saying in order for them to make changes, because I know some people that are really tied into their identity mm-hmm. and their identity is tied into, you know, heavy eating of food and like, you know, alcohol gets tied into that. And so if they start to change and like, you know, they're like, OK, I want to manage this, but I don't want to make a change because of the fact that if I do, it's going to completely disrupt who I hang out with. But I think at that point, if it's not growing you and it's actually pulling you downwards i think at that point we have to admit like i need to start managing this better and i need to make these changes and go through the struggle okay so number two is that you made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of god and we understood him so what does that mean when it comes to the sobriety the sobriety yeah um just realizing that i couldn't do it on my own i needed help um i the insanity of my brain kept telling me that I could do the same things, have different results. And uh, I needed to believe that a power in a power greater than myself that could restore me to sanity and stop that craziness of thinking. Did you always believe that there was a power higher than you or were you like, what was your beliefs upon God and, you know, yeah. you know, somebody bigger than you? Because I know people that they're just like, I believe there's a God, but I don't think that there's anybody higher than me. Right, yeah. and, and I absolutely believe there's a God. I was, I was raised uh, in the Roman Catholic Church. Okay. And um, for the longest time, I was mad at God because I thought where I was in life was a result of where God put me. Mm. But it was my actions Mm. that put me where I was. And that's like the hardest part is like people blame the society. They blame the people that are around them. They blame, you know, the restaurant industry because their food is so good. And, you know, they blame people because they're too strict on their nutrition or whatever it is. And then it's like, no, like if... I always look at it. If I go out one day and I get into an argument with my wife, mm-hmm. then I'm driving and, and you know, now I'm flipping somebody off in the car, right? Then I get to a place and somebody comes to me and I, I you know, I get a little bitey at them. Mm-hmm. Middle of the day, I have a meeting and I'm just like, whoa, this person, blah, 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 right? And I'm just like, 
These are five different worlds. My wife is not connected to my drive. My drive is not connected to, you know, the clients that I engage with. My clients that I engage with are not connected with the meetings that I have. The only thing that's connecting those four worlds is me. And so when I have a day like that, I'm like, or there's something that's reoccurring, even if it's not right, I'm like, I'm the problem. And I'm like, I'm also the solution. So in the case of you with your friends, it's like, my friends are not the problem. They, their problem is not their problem. They're happy. We talked about this. Like if somebody's happy and that's their life, they drink all day, all night, and that's how they want to live the rest of their life, then that's fine. But I don't. Right. And so in order for me to grow out of this, I have to realize that they sitting at this dinner table are not my enablers. They're not my problems. It's like me, I need to grab the glass of water and I need to order the food that I really want to eat. You have to make that decision. They're not doing it for you. Exactly. Right. And so when it comes to that, step number two is that we need to, you know, we have to understand that this is tough to do. And I think that that's something that we do well here is that we try to make the, the workouts like our saying is we make we have fun, exciting, entertaining workouts. That's Absolutely. number one. We want you to come here. We want you to enjoy every day that you work out. Mm -hmm. OK, some days you won't like it. Some exercises you won't <laughs> like it. But we try to make it at least 80 percent where people are coming here and they want to continue to come back. We've got the dark lights. Yeah. We've got the music. You know, we've got the coaches. We're all kind of like entertainer performers, but we're also connecting fun. Right. So we want you to want to come back like you would to Disney or Hawaii or Mexico or whatever right. that being is. And like with the nutrition, you know, I just tell people that's OK. Like, that's why we have the belly runs. Like, right. nutrition is not easy. And I think it's one of the biggest influences around you. Like, I can literally walk five feet and eat five different types of food from any types of the parts of the world. Right. So it's so easy for us to get connected in that. So I think that when you realize, like, hey, I can use some help. I don't see it as me failing. I see it as me having a cheerleader or supporter in my corner. Because especially when you pay somebody to pay attention to you, then their whole world is based around getting you to that next level. So let's go to number four, where you make a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. So break that down for me. How does that work with sobriety? So with sobriety, there was a few different areas to, to break that down into. Um, you know, the things that led us to the drinking, we have to start breaking down. So your harm's done. Um, what, what are the things that you've done that maybe lead you to drink, uh, or the traumas that you've gone through that you are pushing down, um, that, um, that the, the, fear, alcohol, the alcohol or whatever or the pain yeah. that's causing you to drink. Right? Yeah. So you have to do a fearless and moral inventory of your life in the problem. Yeah. So, um, your fears, your, uh, your harm's done, your, um, it, the things that you've done to people that you need to make amends for. So it's it's a, a very grueling list um, that I really had to. Uh, you have to take the time to really write out and be very vigorously honest mm -hmm. uh, with yourself to find out what is leading you to do the things that you're doing. So I guess when it comes to the fitness world, and I think that that's a great. I actually do that. So if there's like a major big decision that I'm going through or you know something that is like reoccurring in my life i make a list of everything like it's like benefits and like here's like the the negatives kind of thing right so it, when it comes to nutrition and working out i think that people need to make a list of like okay when i do belly burns i'm like and if I, especially when i work with somebody so recently i'm speaking to somebody about their belly burn and and like and you know, hope if she watches this video i'm not like pointing at it i think it's a growth moment right. whereas when she doesn't attend the gym or when she eats, you know, a dozen cookies or, you know, she just sees it and she plays it off like it's a joke. But I know it's not funny. It's one of those like, hey, yeah, I just ate 12 donuts. I suck. <laughs> you know, and, and I could see it and I could feel it. It's not funny. And so I said to this person, I said, we need to stop making a joke of this. And I, I said, you need to be serious for 28 days. They were not going to be perfect, but I think that your default to, to letting yourself repeat bad behaviors is that you make fun of yourself in a negative way and then you think that's okay because you put yourself down then you kind of bring yourself back up and then you 
slip up again in any way, shape or form. And then you're just like, okay, this is, you know, like, hi, here's another like joke about myself. Like I suck and blah, blah, blah. So then you bring yourself back down and it's just like, it's that repeat cycle. Right. Right. So for this person, I was like, let's just focus on this one thing. Like if you make a mistake, I don't care. To me, there's no mistakes. If you eat 12 donuts, then tell me what the solution is right now. What can you do right now? And I'm not telling you to go do 12,000 burpees, mm -hmm. but what's one thing? Can you go for a walk? Mm -hmm. You know, can you just drink water for the rest of the night? Like what's one small thing that you can do? And so if people put a list down of like, I get busy, you know, here's how I can, how I can reschedule myself to be able to attend the gym. Mm -hmm. These are the temptations that I face when my kids have hockey, you know, then we go to Tim Hortons after. Can I bring my own food, you know, get a, get a meal prep? right? Or bring protein bars or protein chips or something that is enjoyable, but it's also like you're eating, everybody's eating and we're all tied in. Like you can definitely get ahead of this. But I think by making that list of these are the obstacles, but then also creating a solution, I think that people's success rate is going to go through the roof. Absolutely. And I think understanding your part and what you're doing um, and how it affects the whole situation is extremely important in fixing that problem to know how to move forward. Yep. So let's stop it there. So this is going to be a little bit more of an extensive video. Now, I think I'm, I want to run this all week, to be honest with you. Okay. I think it's a great educational piece. And I think that fitness isn't just about working out and nutrition. There's a huge mental, you know, physical, there's a deeper connection to this than just like, hey, I show up to the gym and I eat chicken breast. Like there's more to it than that. And so I think that this video, even though we've been doing a couple series on it, I think this, this is the one, if you're gonna watch this and figure out how do I do this? It's not the one that I talked about McDonald's, you know, doesn't make you gain weight. It's not that video. That video is one piece. Where it starts with and where it ends with is right here. Introspective, it's on you. And so the more that we can learn and deep dive into us, like you did nine years, I think that that's the goal for, for the audience, for you guys out there to focus, not just like, Hey, I'm going to do 47 days and stop. Right. I'm going to do nine years. And like that nine years is just, I'm just getting started. Okay. So in the next video, let's go over the steps, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then, you know, I'm really hoping that people are liking this video right now. So if you are give the video a like guys, if you've gone through any types of struggles, I want to hear about the struggles in the comments, but then I also want to hear about the solutions because not only are we going to put our problems out there, but I want you to provide a solution for those that are following us, that are engaging with us. And honestly, like people think I'm embarrassed to post, you know, I don't want to like to put my problems out there, but I'm thinking if you put your problems out there is one thing, if you're looking for solutions and then you're going to grow from it, but it, the best way to do your posts, if you don't want to feel braggy is that here's the problem. Here's the solution. I did it. You can too. Absolutely. 100%.